Listening to Coffee with Kenobi, you are with Dan Z and Corey Club, the podcast you're looking for. This is. <laughs> yes. For an entire generation, people have experienced Star Wars the only way it's been possible on the TV screen. But if you've only seen it this way, you haven't seen it at all. This is the podcast you're looking for. He's been waiting for you. The force is strong here, even stronger than the coffee. At last! Where have you been? Welcome to Coffee with Kenobi. Here are your hosts, Dan Z and Corey Club. But there's a lot of power in how a guy chooses to show up every day. And I think, Matt, you can probably sympathize. All of us guys, we have a mirror moment in the morning. We get out of bed, we get in front of the mirror, and we choose how we want to show up. And, you know, every face has a story. Um, every face has a story, and that's something that tr- holds true for guys, you know, everywhere, whether it's here on Earth, or frankly, if it's uh, in a galaxy far, far away, um, everybody's getting ready for our days. So every, every face has a story, and hence, every story has a face. Now, you just talked about the fact that it's true, obviously, for normal guys, as regular guys here on Earth, uh, but also for guys far, far away. How is that? Well, I can almost uh, guarantee, although I, I, I see this amazing crowd out here today, but I, I can almost guarantee that the Gillette campaign is just going to be rest- restricted to Earth. Right, okay. So for, for the first, <laughs> first go anyway. But I think the th- reason why I really like Rogue One is that Rogue One is telling the story of kind of an unlikely group of very courageous individuals that are taking on, you know, just incredible odds. And... Uh, I think that's, that's an amazing story, and I think throughout this film, you're going to see their struggles, and you're going to see their stories, you know, very much played out on their faces. And here on Earth, you know, Gillette plays a very, very big role in helping every guy's face tell their story. Now, as I prepare for my story tonight, I obviously did shave with Gillette. It wasn't just a contractual thing, it's the brand I use. Uh, but tell me, how are you at Gillette helping men to shape their stories? First of all, thank you very much for the business. Handsome guy out here. Thank you very much. Um, listen, every every look, every story um, requires different kinds of products and different kinds of tools. And at Gillette, I think one of the things that we really pride ourselves on is just how much time we spend trying to understand guys. What kind of story do they want to tell? What kind of needs do they have in terms of their grooming? And uh, you know, it's humbling. A humbling part of my job is that uh, you know we've been doing this for over 110 years. Every day when I get up, I know that there's over 750 other guys getting up using a Gillette uh, product to groom themselves, which is pretty awesome. And I think, you know, I think the average person would be amazed at just what goes into the design of, you know, our blades and razors and grooming products. And we have hundreds of researchers and scientists and engineers out there that are really having one thing on their mind, which is how to make the best products on the face of the earth and how to help those guys tell their story. And uh, that's, uh, that's what we do. That's what we do every day. And I think what's going to be really exciting for all of us is that we brought a couple of those scientists along with, with us this evening, and you'll get an opportunity to talk to them, you know, up front and personal, and, you know, get all of your burning, shaving questions that you've always wanted to ask, you know, answered you tonight. Not burning shaving questions, obviously. Yeah. With a Gillette product, never burns. Never burns. Thank you, Matt. I appreciate uh, that. <laughs> now, you've noticed these pods maybe over here as we're walking around. We'll tell you more about those later on and what happens inside them. Don't worry, it's good stuff. Uh, but before then, I would like uh, to share something special uh, with you. And I, John, I know that you want to share something with everyone in the room as well. Yeah, so, I mean, without any further ado, I really want an opportunity to preview a Gillette spot that is going to be absolutely the core of our uh, new marketing program that celebrates Rogue One, a Star Wars story. And uh, before I do that, I wanted to just give you a little bit of background. I've talked a couple times about this, you know, this incredible mirror moment that we have. You know, we wake up, we look in the mirror, kind of size ourselves up, get ready for the day. And in this video, you're going to see a regular guy, you know, in our world, basically getting ready for the day. But imagining what it would be like to get ready, you know, in the Rogue One story and face off against the Empire. So without any further ado, let's show the video.
all the Girls Space Society for the special day. Uh, thank you very much for giving us an exclusive peek at that. Absolutely incredible stuff. Gillette's newest campaign, even before it's aired. That's not what I'll tell you for a little while. Now, since I have you here, is there anything you can tell us about the making of that advert? Yes, absolutely. There's some very, very cool stuff in this video. Um, first of all, I'd just like to recognize, I mean, Lucasfilms has been absolutely awesome to work with and really helped us pull off um, some things I never thought we would be able to do. Um, to begin with, the entire crew and all of the extras you saw in that video actually all worked on Rogue One, which is, you know, very, very cool. We're an authentic brand, and I think it really is really cool when we can bring that kind of authenticity to the work that we do. And the set designer was actually uh, Neil Lamont, who you might know as the, uh, he was one of the ones that supervised the art direction on Star Wars uh, The Force Awakens, so that was really cool. For the true, you know, kind of Star Wars geeks, um, you might have noticed a couple new things in there. The first thing is that the transporter, the Rebel transporter, uh, is brand new to the Star Wars franchise. It may have been, I think it is, the first time maybe that you've ever seen that before. And then finally, there are two R2 units, you know, two droids that I don't think you've seen before that were actually created by Star Wars fans and just happened to catch the eye of Kathleen Kennedy and ended up making it in the movie, and they're making it into our video. So, like I said, some really cool stuff. That's a big moment for those fans, and indeed those droids as well. Now, it's clear that the collaboration resulted in something pretty incredible there, um, but what prompted Gillette to want to work with Rogue One, a Star Wars story, in the first place? Well, I mean, I don't think I have to tell anybody in this room that, I mean, Star Wars is an amazing, iconic uh, franchise, and it excites our guys around the globe. Gillette is a huge global business. We're in 130 countries, and it's clear just how much these movies are absolutely loved by, uh, you know, by our guys. I think the thing about Rogue One for me, though, that, that really brings it, uh, that really brings it for forward for the brand is that this is really about, you know, faces, these unsung heroes of the galaxy, and it really gives me an opportunity to talk with our guys about their stories and their ambitions and their journeys. Every single one of our guys is on a journey, and this really helps us celebrate, recognize, and, and help them tell their stories as well. So it's really cool. Stories. Do you think now is a good time to bring out our special guest for this evening? I think it's an awesome time to do Let's it. Let's do it. Shall we? Let's do it. All right. Uh, this is a man who has uh, created some incredible, incredible things in the Star Wars universe. He's an Oscar winner. Uh, his job is that he's a creature and special makeup effects supervisor, and he's worked on lots of films, including Star Wars The Force Awakens, and of course, Rogue One, A Star Wars Story. Please give it up for Neil Scanlon. Oh, Welcome, Neil. Have a seat. Ah, quite a lot of excited people there. Perhaps didn't know you were coming. Cool. Well, literally, one very excited man. He's here. Your stalker's arrived. Uh, Security. <laughs> Neil, we're very excited to have you here tonight. Well, thank you very much. Uh, Pleasure so, to be here. So, for those of us who perhaps don't know exactly what it is that you do on the, the movies, or I imagine that's quite small numbers. Talk to us about your role. What do you do in the Star Wars universe? Okay, so we're uh, at, we are a little team of people. Well, actually, we're quite a large team of people now. Um, but um, it's our job to work with the directors and to try to capture the world of Star Wars from the perspective of the robots, the droids, the creatures. Sometimes we do some of the, the, the spaceships as well. But we really just work along with the director, uh, work along with the script, try to find... Um, uh, you know, their vision for what the film might be, um, and then to take those designs and create them into um, real-world practical effects, which is um, uh, opposite to, in a sense, what you might call a digital effect, which doesn't really exist um, in the real world. It exists only within the computer. And as time goes by, more and more we combine those two technologies together. So, as, uh, as you'll see in row one, there's the beginning of some really exciting uh, amalgamations of the practical world with the digital world, which I don't think we've seen before. And you've worked with different directors on uh, several Star Wars movies now. How does it work uh, in terms of their direction being different from one to the next? Is it, is it difficult to kind of integrate with a new person? Yeah, I mean, I think the first thing is that you, <clears throat> you hope that they like you. I mean, that's... that's... How, could, how could anyone not like you, Neil? Come on. <laughs> well, come on, you know, you You're have adorable. to get through the initial interview, don't you? <laughs> so, um, as long as they like you and you start off in a good place, which is uh, where you, you, you do start. Um, I think uh, every film is... Uh, about their personality as much as anything else, and it, I think it also awakens is very much. You can see, um, I mean, obviously we don't know JJ, uh, but it is a, it, it is very much JJ, and um, 
I think you'll see the same in Rogue, and I think what's amazing and exciting about Rogue is that Gareth Edwards, who, um, in a sense, uh, is a young, dynamic, um, you know, a guy, took on this huge responsibility of taking on this next film. And um, I think what he's done is uh, really, uh, say, incredibly brave, because he sort of threw the rule book out the window and, and came from it from his own unique stance, respectful to the genre, but I think brave enough to be able to put his own twist on it. And I think for that reason, uh, it, he, there, there is a, a quite a unique and a, a exciting uh, feel to this film that we maybe haven't seen before. And John and I were chatting earlier about all the characters that you create and where the inspiration for that comes from, obviously creating so many different stories within the film uh, based on these, these characters. Keeping that politically correct. <laughs> uh, uh, no, I have an amazing team of people. I mean, it's all, it's all great for me to be sat here on a sofa and... and, and asking me these questions, but I, I am, you know, I have the best job in the world because I just sit at the top um, of a, a, a group of very, very talented people, and, and really the inspiration comes from uh, a group of concept guys who uh, are massive fans, who have, uh, again, uh, amazing imaginations. We talk about things, we, we are all fans of filmmaking across the board, uh, we all uh, are around about the same age. Um, there are some younger people coming into it now, but we all remember the original films, and so we all have this incredibly close uh, fondness for what we do. And so I think that uh, talking, you talk with the director, the director sometimes has no idea of what the character might be like and just sort of really hopes that you, you, you'll you throw something his way or her way. And sometimes they have a, a clear indication of what they want. And um, one of the characters in particular in Rogue One is, is one that was very much from Gareth's mind. You know, there's a new droid in there, which I think is, a, is going to be what they call a breakout character. So, uh, for instance, so, uh, so yes, it's really, yeah, it, it, it's from that. And, um, yeah, having fun. I mean, it, we, we are incredibly lucky that we are paid to do, to play. It's not a bad job, is it? <laughs> it's not, not a bad, bad job, job <laughs> um, When it comes to breakout characters, obviously you've worked with BB-8. Yeah, so the presence yeah. of BB-8, that's very exciting. Do you consider yourself one of BB-8's parents? Can I, I phrase do, it like that? Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> do indeed, yeah. yeah. BB-8 was, um, um, I mean, again, you know, all credit to JJ, you may not know, but the original design of BB-8 was sketched on a little manic, uh, uh, sort of a, a, a napkin uh, on a restaurant, which I always sort of liken to the Picasso uh, <laughs> sketch, which I think he did once when he couldn't pay a, 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 a restaurant bill. Um, so the, the, the genius is very much in that design, but the, the bringing of him to life was, 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 a lot of, was a lot of fun, and I think that, you know, there's, sometimes we do things, and, you know, we're very close to them ourselves, and we, it, it is what it is, but I think BBA, right from the start, you kind of knew that he or she, and, and who knows, um, was going to be something of a special little character, and I think if you, for, for all of that, how do you replace R2-D2, I think BBA, took on that mantle with, with, with all, with, yeah, amazingly well, really. It's a, a how very many, successful design. How many BB-8s do you have in your own house? Oh, too many, too many. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit of everywhere you different can. sizes, as they go. Um, we, rather excitedly, have got the latest cut of the Rogue One trailer that we're going to share with you tonight. Now, before we watch it, Neil, is there anything in particular we should look out for that you're proud of, that you think Star Wars fans here will go, oh, that's an amazing thing? Well, definitely look out for K2SO. He's the new droid, and I think that, you know, he's got, he's, he is going to be, um, uh, yeah, he's full of attitude, he's, he's very different than C3PO or any of the other droids that we've come across. And the others is, I think, again, in the Star Wars world, it's just... Look, there is an enormous amount of detail that flashes by you at a frightening rate. Um, I remember when I saw Force Awakens, I came away thinking half of the things that we had made and half of the things that we had done are not in the film. After viewing 10 or 12, I was just beginning to see them. So I think, yeah, just look closely. There's some, there's some really great stuff in there, yeah, from, every, from all departments, not just our own. Well, we are only going to see this trailer once. So eyes peeled, everyone. No heavy blinking. Let's enjoy the trailer for Rogue One, A Star Wars Story. <laughs>
Oh, Our rebellion is all that remains to push back the Empire. You think he might be able to help us? When was the last time you were in contact with your father? What is this? It appears he is critical to the development of a super weapon. If my father built this thing, we need to find him. All right. How many do I need? They are requesting a call sign. It's, um, Rogue. Rogue One. The power that we are dealing with here is immeasurable. If the Empire has this kind of power, what chance do we have? We have hope. Rebellions are built on hope. They have no idea we're coming. Take hold of this moment. The force is strong. Make ten men feel like a hundred. Vader indeed. Um, I I'm ready for December. I am as well. I'm really excited about it. I don't think you're alone as well based on all of your reactions to that. Uh, people sitting on the edge of their seats quite literally. Uh, now while Neil has given us some insight into the movie making process and the creature creation, the night is not over. Now as John mentioned earlier, we are fortunate enough to have the opportunity to hear directly from three different experts uh, about the study of your faces and the stories that they could tell. Now, as you mingle this evening in the Story Station pods, which are over there, are three experts, celebrity facial profiler Alan Stevens from Australia, Carmelo Gwauster, celebrity grooming stylist from here in London, and Dr Christina Van Oosthaus, senior manager of scientific communications with Gillette, will talk with you all about the stories behind each and every face in this room. Uh, Mr Stevens will highlight the story that your physical features and expressions tell, Mr. Gwauster will help you understand how the look you craft defines your story. And Dr. Van Oosthaus will show you how Gillette's technology analyzes our guys' faces in order to provide them with the best products to help them define their story. So with that, John, thank you so much for helping me thank out you, tonight. Man. And Neil, thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy production schedule. I know you've got to dash off literally two minutes away now to go and do more work uh, on the movie. Um, I would encourage all of you as well to stop by the costume displays uh, at the back, check out the production costumes, warm for the filming of Rogue One, uh, and learn more about your story, of course, from my experts in the story stations, which, on cue, have lit up beautifully. I'm intrigued to find out what my face tells about me. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Please, once again, a round of applause for John and for Neil. Go, <laughs> so, find out about your stories. This is Danzy live from Coffee with Kenobi's experiences at the Gillette Road One event at the Pinewood Studios in London, England. It is an amazing, amazing experience. So much to see. We did a live periscope on Twitter showing you some of the costumes, and we've got all of them here. We've got Cassian Endor and Bodhi Rook, Jen Urso, Jared Imway, the entire level crew is here, Baze Malbus. I've never seen the detail, of course, on some of these costumes. Some of these are making the very first appearance here. There are two of the Imperial Death Trooper. It was a very, very stunning figure. The armor is fascinating. As a burgeoning Stormtrooper TK builder myself, I find it particularly interesting. And then all in all is Blender and Miguel, you have director Orson Krennic with the famous cloak. He's got his blaster on his hip. There are opportunities to take your pictures with stormtroopers. There's a lot going on. It's very, very cool. There's all kinds of things. There's hors d'oeuvres, there's champagne, just about everything you can want. And then perhaps as interesting as anything, there's uh, four bays for Gillette, and they are offering different opportunities. For example, they're going to tell me what my face says about me. So we're going to do that. 
and talk to some of our friends around here and be back soon. Hanging on 
to you're hanging on to earth, aren't you? And you're yeah. hanging on to all of those tangible things that we have around us. It's grounded. It's grounded. Yeah, it, yeah exactly. It's very important. And it, it's, it's it's very it's it's a very close line between being there and then suddenly stepping out and going, "Ooh, we we've, we've let go of that grounded element now. We're somewhere very very different." So are there any Gillette products worked into this? Because there was famously there was like a Philips Lady Shave ended up being Qui-Gon's communicator in Phantom Menace. I'm Venice. sure <laughs> there are millions of them in all different places. I can't honestly cite one, but I, I, I dare say you're dead right. I can say there are, yeah, to, to my knowledge, there are no Gillettes in the creatures. How do the effects that you have all created enhance rather than detract from the storytelling and make such a beautiful melding of two creators? Uh, because I think, I think uh, it, there is a kind of, uh, as I say, there is this language, there is this sort of um, this charm that you, you want to hold on to. And uh, it, 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 as, you, as you begin to understand what each director wants for the film, and in a sense, their sense of humour and their sensibilities generally, you begin to get a feeling that, you know, this would be well served as a practical effect, or this is well served as a digital effect. And, you know, it's, it's never about which effect it is, it's about which effect most carries that message or that language. Sometimes it's, it's just better for the actors to have something practical there because they will respond in a way that is very different than not having, you know, maybe just having a blue stick or a pair of eyes. There's other times where it, it's, it's, it's distracting to try and do it practically because the infrastructure around it, all the things. So there are so many different things that play into the decision of saying which is the most, which will be the most successful not only for the film but during the filmmaking process because uh, as soon as an effect becomes an obstacle to a director's uh, ability to shoot is it no longer has that that sort of what we, what we call precious quality it just becomes a problem and I think that's one of the wonders of CG is that CG is a post-production effect and such never really intrudes in the filmmaking process so we have to be very careful as we start to introduce and we start to push back effects forward to a generation of directors who aren't really very used to using with them either you know I'm surprised sometimes I forget that you know I'm so old <laughs> um, that we bring new stuff to the screen and what's not new to me is, is new to them and it's a whole new introduction so yeah, yeah it's thank you a thing. no worries thank you so we're back at Pinewood with two gentlemen who are no strangers to Star Wars and Phantom we got James Burns and Mark Newell I was very excited to see you here it's not a surprise in any way shape or form kind of tell us uh, your impressions of what you see so far I think it's, I mean, Gillette have spent a lot of money bringing out all the costumes from Rogue One. It looks fantastic. Uh, I think the products look great. We're going to have a closer look at those in a, in a minute. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's great to be at Martin Studios. I mean, this is uh, now, I guess, the home of Star Wars, whereas Elstree previously, Mark and I were talking about this yeah. a few weeks ago, saying that, you know, Star Wars was made in at Elstree. Uh, six Star Wars films were shot there, albeit for episodes one, two, and three, just a few scenes. Um, but Pinewood now has shot four Star Wars films, yes. and very soon we'll be up to six. Well, they haven't shot the fourth one yet, but they're, they're definitely in free pop. So um, it's pretty exciting. Um, and Pinewood is, is growing. It's a growing facility. They're doing so much here. And I think it's really exciting to be here them the Gillette to be doing this launch here. I agree. Then you walk in and you see the, the photos on the wall of all the incredible things. There's, just, there's a lot of storytelling history here. Oh, loads. I mean, just walking down. I got lost, by the way. It was a close shave. And, uh, no pun intended. I nearly didn't get here. But I've got to that say, was very sharp of you. Pun intended. <laughs> this is the best of Just in the nick of time. Oh, totally. Is that wrong? So, uh, yeah, you walk down the corridor. There's pictures of Connery on the moon playing golf and obviously... And you were foaming at the mouth seeing those. Oh, my God. This is just uh, but yeah, it's just thanks, Dave. It just it is. It's fantastic. All, like I say, all the costumes from Rogue One are all, but a load of costumes from Rogue One are there. We just spoke. All three of us have just spoke to Neil Scanlon, which is fantastic. Um, yeah, there's fellow fans. Some people have jetted in across from the Atlantic, which is very cool. Um, yeah, no, it's a good vibe, and I think uh, I think Gillette have done a really good job because it's not a promotional tie-in that you would initially expect. But they've actually made it look a million dollars, and, and yeah, the products have gone out look really cool. And uh, yeah, I'm waiting for the lady shade, the late, the female version. You know, the, the, the female version, gin version, the gin version, gin version. So, yeah, it comes, that out. It comes with an extra because after you shave with the gin, you yes. get an extra tonic. No problem. Ask your questions, Dan, quick before we go to worst <laughs> puns, please. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks guys so much for being on, and I'm, uh, I believe I'm long overdue. You are. Yeah. You are. Um, you are. It's all Mark's fault, because he does the shit. Yes, blame me. So I blame, blame me. Hey, as much as you two have done for our show, you never have to apologize to me. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> so we're back 
at the Gillette Room one event, and one of the great things about coming over here is I've got to meet some amazing people who have passion not just for Star Wars, but storytelling. And one of my good buddies here, uh, so I'd introduce yourself. Hey, how you doing, Jeff? How are you? Doing great. And, and what uh, do you represent? Yeah. Uh, I'm a blogger for the Huff Post, and then also an independent social influencer on Twitter, at Jake Bachman. That's right, yeah. The social influencer is an excellent name. You've definitely got to follow this Twitter account. Tell me kind of what Star Wars is to you and how an event like this sort of enhances your family. Star Wars to me is uh, just, it just it's the same symbolizes my childhood. Uh, my strongest memory is being seven in Star Wars in the theater with my, yeah, my father and uh, my, uh, the rest of my family. And uh, it's just to even have it come back. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And who would have thought that something like Gillette, the lens of Euclid, they showed us the commercial which I'm sure by the time people hear this, they'll sing it. We're back to the Road One Gillette event, and I have a gentleman here who's going to do something really cool. Tell us your name, sir. My name is uh, Carmelo Costella, and I'm a men's grooming expert. That's um, right. So I've been doing this for almost 30 years. I started really young when I was about nine years old in Sicily and I moved to London 16 years ago and I'm my uh, I'm very honoured to be called by Gillette here to come and do this because I'm, first of all I'm a big Star Wars fan and you know I, I, I love Gillette as a company and it's well known all over the world and uh, I'm, I'm here to give my expertise about the story uh, a guy can create about his look and I'm glad to have been on the other side so that's what I do I right. sort of look at a guy like a blank canvas you know fingers like that and I give them the best shape ever whether it's with their facial hair with their hair I look at what their face shape is uh, because every face shape is different so uh, that's you know you, and my, my role is to give them a nice features and enhance their features as well. Right. Thank well, you. I love it. I, wow. I got I to step in the chair. I gotta see. My wife is going to get a yeah, big kick out of please this. Please, take a seat. All right, so we're back. Uh, a lot of great things. One of the coolest things about this experience for me is the people that we have met and talked with. And Star Wars, as we know, brings people together. And there are two leaders here in the men's industry. Would you say fashion and fitness and all things health and all things goodness. So go ahead and introduce yourselves and tell us what where you're from and how this whole Star Wars thing came together for you. Hey gang, this is Michael Rodeo from Men's Fitness Magazine from New York City. I'm here at the Rogue One event, courtesy of Gillette. I'm loving the costumes, loving the people, loving the the the, the look of this whole this whole package, and it's excited to be to be speaking to all of you. Um, and it's it's. It's kind of cool, I gotta say, Dan. It's kind of cool to to see how many different kinds of people Star Wars comes together. Because you know, when you're in a Star Wars community, a lot of times you sort of imagine the kind of person that you're talking to, especially when you're online. You know, we're, we're on these forums online, and, and it can be difficult to visualize an audience. And one of the best things about this event has been the fact that you get to see such diversity of people, such a diversity of interests, such a diversity of backgrounds, and we're brought together by this love for the Force, by the love for Millennium Falcon swag, by the love of Chewbacca t-shirts, and, and that's what we're here for, and that's what it's all about. And then they managed to take it to another level, making it somewhat fashionable and chic. And tell us, uh, tell us why you're here and where you're from. I'm Christine Flamia from uh, Men's Health. I do the I run the style and grooming channels online. Um, so I came here with Gillette, um, and yeah, there are a lot of fashionable fashionable people in London, um, especially at this event. We were kind of surprised by that. There's a little little less Chewbacca shirts than I was imagining, um, but yeah, it's been cool to see the costumes and be in a studio where um, so many historical movies have been shot. Um, and yeah, just kind of get a taste for all the different types of people that are around and. Um, get inspired with some fashion, which I wasn't expecting. Yeah, it's got to be something where when you both first got this event, because obviously you're fans, but you don't necessarily cover Star Wars as much as other shows. So what about this surprise you, and how did it work for you? 
So I guess what surprised me would be the um, the fashionable aspect of it. You know, what kind of people are interested in it and how does that inspire them? Um, I've done a few stories just about uh, like the different types of de- or different designers who have come out with um, clothes that have that are Star Wars inspired. Like I think it was uh, I don't remember the brand. I want to say the tie bar. They came out with cufflinks that were uh, kind of a matte black um, Darth Vader. Uh, type and then they had socks too so I thought that was really cool a subtle way of showing that you like Star Wars but still be fashionable it's possible you know what's great about that is they're one of our affiliates so thank you (laughs) you're very welcome I didn't even mean to do that (laughs) it's it's synergy what about you Um, I think what's what's cool now is that with Star Wars re-entering the mainstream of popular consciousness and sort of coming into all these different fields whether it's sports or whether it's fashion these kinds of things you start seeing a little bit of that Nixon watches with Star Wars stuff, and you start seeing those stance socks that you, you get people for their birthday, and like, hey, man, I saw these R2-D2 socks, and I thought of you, or the cufflinks. Where, you know, if you're wearing cufflinks, man, you mean business. And to show up with BB-8 cufflinks, I mean, you're, you're, not, you're not messing around, and that's, that's a, exactly the kind of subtle statement to belonging to a community, and that's what it's really about. It's like, what are any of these clothes, any of these, um, these costumes signifying? You know, we're looking at these, these different robes and these different uniforms, and they signify the membership of a clan, and that's, I think, what we all come back to is... Is, is it signal that we understand? Is it signal that you, you have something belonging? And it's not even just Star Wars, of course, but Star Wars is such a, a, a global phenomenon. It's such a global exemplar. It is the mythology of our time. And, and when you show up somewhere with, with that little you know, rebellion logo on your shoulder, or if you show up with the, the Empire belt buckle or the Star Wars backpack, and you, you could go somewhere where nobody even speaks your language, but you'll get that knowing nod. And somebody says, hey, you and I have a love for the same thing. Yeah, it's, it's a ubiquitous thing. And so you can, it's fun, isn't it, to hang out with writers? It's, it's great to hear you both, your perspectives on this. And we have another gentleman here uh, who is no stranger to the Internet. Go ahead and tell us your name, sir, and where you're from. It's Martin Rickman. I'm from uprocks.com. So tell us, if you will, your kind of your level of Star Wars fandom and what something like this does for you. You know, it's really interesting. This is probably what I'm going to write about coming to this event. So I've been thinking a lot about fanhood and where we come to it from. And with Star Wars, it's really interesting. Everyone has an origin story, just like comic books, from where they come to Star Wars. And you can talk to anyone. I mean, you could do an entire podcast series just on that, about where did you first get hooked? Because... It doesn't hook everyone, but everyone who has been hooked has been hooked in some really special, unique way. For me, I remember watching episode four the very first time with my dad and having him there watch, introducing me to Star Wars. And we had a vinyl of the, the the first soundtrack. And I remember being in my living room in my house in Cincinnati growing up, very, very little kid listening to the music, the soundtrack, over and over and over again on the, this old record player and imagining myself, you know, fighting the Empire. And then from there on out, you watch Empire, you, watch, you know, Empire Strikes Back come back, and that's the movie for me. And then Jedi, obviously, everyone loved Jedi as they were a kid because the Wookiees are, you know, got everything that's amazing about the little furry animals and the Ewoks and everything. And after that, there was that bull where it was the same one all of us were in where there were no the dark times the dark times and well different kind of it's interesting coming to then the prequels where i was old enough that i was excited i waited in line for the first prequel i don't know that i've ever waited in line for another movie since and and never a movie before that and there was something even about those that was still magical for me is just having that seeing everyone excited and seeing the energy that that had and then watching that again with force awakens and this new reboot seeing the kids who were now my age when i first was interacting with it as i start to think about being a parent someday is really heartwarming for me because i can see a little bit of myself in those situations in those origin stories and watching more of those pop up i mean it's just really amazing well said. Again, it's, it's a, a great thing. It brings people together, and, and it just inspires so much. So thank you all very much for being on Coffee with Kenobi. Thanks so much. This is, I mean, the event has been terrific, and it's just amazing to get the chance to share others' origin stories and, and see the knowledge and the excitement that this draws out. I mean, the, Star Wars is a really special franchise, and I think you can see that every time you talk to anyone that really loves it as much as you guys do. 
So another great perk about this event is you run into people that are insanely famous celebrities that you never even thought you would ever meet. So, sir, go ahead and tell us who you are and what brought you here. My name is Darth Vader. How dare you insult me like that? Actually, who he is, he's depressed Darth. You know him from Twitter. Quite an amazing account, hilarious. Tell us kind of about how that came to be and what brought you here. Uh, sorry, that was Darth. Uh, he can be unruly at times, has a mood disorder. I speak for him sometimes. Um, so the account started back in 2010, basically. Uh, we wanted to kind of show Darth's life uh, as he was now, basically. Uh, and that was kind of down and out. Two Death Stars had been destroyed. His kids hate him. His wife is dead. The Sand People murdered his mother. Uh, he's had a... I mean, a really tough, tough time, and we thought we wanted to show that to the world. So we opened this Twitter account to show that depressed Darth is a person, and he needs to be respected. And this account shows that he is a good guy and pretty funny, I, I would add, as his spokesperson. Thank you. Well, and honestly, I mean, your account has exploded like the Death Star, which is pretty handy. That was rude. Um, you're lucky that Darth is not here, that you have to, to hear that, because he would have force choked you, and this interview would have been over, but continue, please. I got to say, when I got the good fortune of seeing Depressed Darth dance right in front of Big Ben, that was something I don't think I ever thought I would see, and it was better than my wildest dreams. Well, you know, Darth, <clears throat> the movies portray him as this evil villain. If you really got to know this guy, he is a, I mean... Talk about a good guy. I mean, he is a good father. Uh, he calls Luke, you know, a couple times a year and says, hey, how you doing? And, you know, that him dancing is just because tomorrow's Friday. So he was happy. He was, you know, in London and he was having a good time. And for you to judge him like that, I mean, that is very upsetting that, you know, you're going to say, oh, Darth can't dance because he's an evil villain. You know, everybody can dance. OK, that's right. And I thought he did it very, very well. In fact, I thought Michael Jackson probably would celebrate if he was still with us. And sir, uh, what is your name and where are you from? Hi, Stephen Schaefer here from the Boston Herald. Yes, and tell us kind of, I know that you have this great thing that we like to do on Coffee with Kenobi where you go into something fresh, you don't really necessarily know what it's about, you vo avoid spoilers, and kind of tell us the impetus for that. The impetus for being fresh when you go see a movie? Well, it's just try not to have any prejudgments on things, to not say this looks boring, or I've heard this story before, because so many times you have. Uh, you know, and to try to just see it without the hype also, because uh, the trailers will try to sell you on a certain point of view for a movie, and, you know, you may have a totally different take on the movie. Like, oh, it's really not funny, and it's supposed to be a comedy. Or, oh, it's really kind of exciting, and it's supposed to be a depression drama, you know. So, well, then, and you know, Rogue One is. I, do, I just want to say that is such an odd uh, approach because for most people, they get excited watching trailers and they want to know a lot about the movie before they invest their money in it. I'm investing time, but I'm not paying $14 or $20 to go see it. Well, time is extremely precious. And, and you had, had come into Rogue One sort of not as sure about what it was about. And so, how does this kind of flesh out the film for you, and what does it make you think about when you go to theaters in December? Well, I've learned that there are a lot of people like you that uh, live their lives around a Star Wars environment and mythology and know a lot more than I do. So that was actually the most interesting part about this, to see, you, you know there's a global following and that it's incredibly popular, they wouldn't still be making the movies and selling the merchandise, but when you come to something like this and meet people who are, you know, uh, having part of their lives based on Star Wars aspects of it and operating independently, it's kind of interesting, you know. It really is amazing how it brings people together. Thank you so much for being on the show. Good, Good luck. And the costumes, seeing them always on the mannequins from the movie, is always kind of a kick. You know, I mean, when they did it for Harry Potter or some of the others with, like, uh, exhibitions, people, you know, they were sold out. Oh, yeah. I mean, it just really, it kind of gives it a layer of verisimilitude and the uniqueness. Uh, and you see the quality kind of goes into the design of the characters, too. Yeah, people like behind-the-scenes knowledge. I mean, I always think it's sad that you would find out how they would do a special effect. I mean... 
wouldn't you want to keep the magic? But a lot of people love that idea of, oh, we take this and we digitally create this and look at our result. We are live with an amazing Star Wars experience, Channel Star Wars. Oh, it's an amazing experience. The force is strong tonight at Pinewood Studios. Isn't it great to say that? Go ahead and introduce yourselves and tell us kind of how Channel Star Wars started and how you got involved. So Channel Star Wars has started very recently, actually. Teamed up with a few guys from America, and we've only corresponded through Skype. So tonight is the first time that we've actually met each other. So it's very exciting. And what an event to have met each other at. And it's up, onwards and upwards from here. And Brian, how did you get involved with Channel Star Wars? And by the way, my name is Zoe. There you go. Thank you, Zoe. Hey, folks. This is Brian with ChannelStarWars.com. I'm one of the hosts of the Star Wars Hour. Hopefully, some of you guys have some cross-promotion there. I know that we've uh, shared a few talents back and forth. But as Zoe said, I'm uh, just recently a part of Channel Star Wars. We, they launched very shortly before meeting me. I was lucky enough to come on board. And when we were invited to participate in this Rogue One event sponsored by Gillette, they offered to bring someone over. And since three of our four staff here on site are already in England, I got to be the one that they brought over. So as Zoe said, can't reinforce it enough. Amazing night. The co seeing the costumes live in person is uh, quite exceptional. I have, I have to butt in. There's another reason why we got Brian involved. He does voices. You have to show us some of your voices, Brian. It, it's generally not a good idea to encourage me, but since we are looking to, to fill an hour with the podcast here, I think I can work. So, uh... <laughs> Hey, folks, this is me, Watto. I'm your old pal. I'm here for Coffee with Kenobi. I want to make sure you come by my junk shop in Moss Eisley. My price is so low, you're going to think I've been Jedi mind tricked, huh? Nah, just kidding. I'm a Dodarian. <laughs> Seriously, does it get any better than that? And I know for a fact that you do a mean Palpatine. Well, well you know, the, the trouble with Palpatine is, is you, I never get enough respect because honestly... Literally, the only drawback to the dark side of the Force is that once you reach a certain level of mastery, you must develop elocution such that everything you say sounds sinister. If I may give an example, Winona Ryder. <laughs> I love that you used elocution. Well done, sir. As, um, as a Brit listening to that, if there's any Brits out there, that really reminded me of Rowan Atkinson playing Mr. Bean. Hey, very much so. That's a compliment, I think. I was really going more for Ian McDiarmid, but I'll take Rowan Atkinson. Shoot for the stars, hit Mr. Bean. Hey, that's pretty cool. Well, thank you both so much. We look forward to seeing what's going on next for Channel Star Wars. Thanks, Dan. Appreciate your time. Love your show. Thanks for having us on. Thank you. May the force be with you all. Chewie, get us out of here! <laughs> If you would like to respond to our question of the show, have a comment, or just want to say hello, send us an email or mp3 at feedback at coffeewithkenobi.com. Or if you have a specific question or comment for either of us individually, email us at danz at coffeewithkenobi.com or coreyc at coffeewithkenobi.com. Or visit us at coffeewithkenobi.com and click on the Contact Us section or comment on one of the stories featured on the site. If you enjoy the show, please write a review in iTunes or Stitcher. You can also like the show on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash coffee with Kenobi, as well as keep up to date at our Twitter feed at coffee with Kenobi. You can also find us on Tumblr at coffee with Kenobi dot Tumblr dot com. If you enjoy the jazz music, the album is Eye to Eye by Steve Torok. Give the evacuation code signal. This podcast is not endorsed by the Walt Disney Company or Lucasfilm Limited. It is intended for entertainment and informational purposes only. The official Star Wars website can be found at www.starwars.com. Star Wars, all names, sounds, and any other Star Wars-related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Disney and their respective trademark and copyright holders. All original content of this podcast is the intellectual property of Coffee with Kenobi unless otherwise indicated. This is the podcast you're looking for. There's no one here.